Today, we cover pronominal suffixes, which we've already seen before, but this time we're gonna attach them to verbs. Let's go. So if you recall, we've already seen pronominal suffixes. It was like, I don't know, nine chapters ago. Pronominal suffixes can be added to the direct object marker. For example, F-E. And when it's attached to the direct object marker, you know that it's the object of the sentence. But now we are going to see that you can add these pronominal suffixes. And to remind you, pronominal suffix means pronouns straight to the verb. And when it's added straight to the verb, it is your object of the sentence. For example, shufatka, he judged you. The verb has the built-in subject. The pronominal suffix has the built-in object. Now, when we looked at pronominal suffixes before, we saw two different types. There was type one and type two. And type one had some alternate forms, but you can generally see how they're related. Verbs use type one, including the alternates for pronominal suffixes. You don't necessarily need to memorize anything here. What you need to do is be able to recognize when you're dealing with pronominal suffixes. Keep in mind, some of the endings in our conjugations look similar or identical to pronominal suffixes, but the pronominal suffixes add to any conjugation endings. So you should be able to see it. You should be able to recognize that something's different. Something is afoot. So by way of reminder, we have e or ni for me. We have ka for you, masculine. K for you, feminine. O for he or him rather. Alternate would be who. We have a for feminine, which would be her. The alternate being ha or rather a in terms of spelling versus pronunciation, that is. We have nu for we, chem for you, masculine, chen for you, feminine. Both of these are plural. We have hem for them, masculine, and hen for them, feminine, both of these being plural. Now these have some alternates. The third masculine plural can simply be a final mem, whereas the third feminine plural could be a, a simple final noon. So, spitting out the examples here with our verb katal, to kill. Kitalani, he killed me. Kitalcha, he killed you. Kitalech, he killed you. Kitalo, he killed him. Kitala, he killed her. Kitalanu, he killed us. Kitalchem, he killed you. Kitalchen, he killed you. Kitalam, he killed them. Kitalan, he killed them. That's with the perfect conjugation. Now you'll notice there are some vowel pointing changes. That's not really a main concern. Why? Because you know your prefix, you know your suffix. So you should be able to see how these verbs are working and then they add the pronoun at the end. Now that being said, sometimes the changeable vowels or uh, the consonants will change when a verb is going to attach a pronominal suffix. What you'll find is the comets hey will change to will change to pathak tav or the comets under the tav will become an accent or the vowel will become hirik yod. But in all instances, the initial vowel in the perfect becomes shava. Now, in our material, you'll see that there's nothing there for second masculine plural, second feminine plural. And that's because they're simply not attested, which means they don't exist, or they just don't occur frequently enough to warrant discussion. Now, don't forget, some of these changeable vowels that occur may end up experiencing defective spelling. So for example, you might see a shirk turn into a kibitz. One final note here is that with third hey weak verbs that add a pronominal suffix where the suffix includes a hey, the hey's basically just assimilate or you could say drop out. It's oblout somehow. I don't know. 
it's just the third hay drops I, it's simple you should still be able to recognize it so again you're gonna see some variation in spelling don't be alarmed you're gonna stick to what you know you know the stem you know your conjugation both the prefix and or suffix endings and you know your pronominal suffixes you're gonna have to put all the clues together this is where highlighting can be helpful using colors using different colored pens using different colored pencils do something mark it up dissect it it makes it easier play like your sherlock holmes and you're solving a puzzle when it comes to the imperfect conjugation it uses the type one pronominal suffixes as well but it also has a few extra ones that the perfect does not share. These are noon-based endings. These typically occur in second masculine singular, third masculine singular, third feminine singular. With the second masculine singular, this one's a weird one because the noon actually drops out. It assimilates into the final cough and becomes a dogesh forte. Otherwise, in the third person, you'll see the noon with a dogesh plus the ending, enu and na. So we're left with echa, enu, ena. But the accent is up front. Enna, enu, echa. Look at lechav, to seize, to capture. Yelechdecha, this is second masculine singular. So this would be, he will capture you. Now, when it comes to the imperfect, the spelling changes that occur are primarily to take the, the stem vowel and change it to a shava. And then you add the pronominal suffixes at the end of the conjugation. Just note that sometimes the imperfect will use a connecting vowel. Not always, but it can, and you don't need to memorize them all. Again, the point is recognition. We're not trying to be fluent. We're looking to recognize. We're looking to piece it together. We're looking to dissect it. So just know that there could be some connecting vowels. And as we saw with perfect, third hey verbs simply often drop the third hey. And then you just have your pronominal suffix at the end. Now, a real tricky set of verbs is nathan to give, lachach to take, and seem to place. And that's because of the uh, irregularity of these verbs. Just be aware that with some of these irregular verbs, uh, some, some of the consonants will drop out, like the noon will drop out. We've seen that before. Uh, and so you, you really need to know your vocabulary. When it comes to the Cal imperative, well, this one's a little tricky, but you'll see your, your stem and uh, you'll see a Kometz Hatuf up front. The next vowel that you'll see will be a Shava. And then after that, you'll see something like a Tsere. So it's really unlike anything we've seen before. And then you'll see your final pronominal suffix on there. At least this is true for second masculine singular. Otherwise, you might see some lengthening. You might see some shortening. There's oblaut. So let's look at some examples. Ketaltiv, I killed him. Kitaluhu, they killed him. Kitalnuhu, we killed him. Yiktalehu, he will kill him. Yiktalcha, he will kill you. Katlem, you kill them. So that is pronominal suffixes on verbs. It's really quite simple if we're being honest with ourselves, because we've learned our vocabulary, we've learned our prefixes, we've learned our suffixes for our verb conjugations, we've learned our pronominal suffixes. All we have to do is put the pieces of the puzzle together. It's like a jigsaw puzzle, okay? So what I, I recommend is take a highlighter, take colored pens, colored pencils, do something like that. Dissect the verbs that you see stick with what you know you'll be able to figure it out trust yourself next time we'll get into infinitives see you then